Uh, look, uh, my question is in regards to the New South Wales Government uh, approving or fast-tracking an mRNA vaccine for its border disease <coughs> virus, uh, and it's been manufactured in New South Wales. Do you have any input into that at all, or do you keep an eye on uh, so what the other state government agencies do we, in regards to biosecurity? We don't have input into that, but um, we are currently at the moment um, looking at the processes that we would undertake in order to approve mRNA vaccines. Right, so where, where does the authority lie with the federal government? For, to approve for, a vaccine? Yeah. Yes. So do you have to, because on the 1st of May there is a press release put out to say that uh, they fast-tracked an mRNA vaccine for for disease virus. So have you had any input into that? Um, oversight? Or have you, you approved that or not? We haven't approved that as yet. We have not. We haven't as yet approved any mRNA vaccines. Okay, so why has the New South Wales government put this... Oh, so they're saying it's a pilot project, again, that they've successfully manufactured it, but it hasn't been approved. That's correct. We understand that it's a uh, pilot um, project under a contained facility at this point in okay, time. Okay, cool. Now that's, that's good to know. Uh, so in regards to mRNA vaccines, I'm not sure if you're familiar with the pathway, but they basically seek to neuter one protein rather than the rest of the proteins in the virus. <coughs> then if a single-stranded mRNA virus is then leads to the risk of mutation. So it's a well-known... There's two factors. You've got pathogen <coughs> priming, where the mRNA virus will mutate around to escape the actual vaccine. Yep, and then you've got original antigenic sin, where you'll have the the actual sheep in this case will actually build up an immunity to the first virus, but not the second virus. So is this something you're looking at in regards to, say, the bulk rollout of mRNA vaccines for the various diseases that exist out there? So um, when we assess any vaccine, um, and that will include mRNA vaccines, we look at a range of different aspects of it. Yep. Um, that includes the, its efficacy, so whether it works or not, um, its chemistry and manufacture, uh, its likely impact on the environment, uh, if, if it's something that may have an impact on the environment, um, its and, and its human health impacts. So we will look very closely, and we want to, this is one of the reasons we're doing some preparatory work around how we would assess mRNA vaccines, because they are new to newer to the market. We've had some initial discussions with TGA, we've spoken with industry about it, um, we've talked to international counterparts about um, the processes in this. So for our point of view, it's um, critical that we make sure we have a um, firmly science-based approach to assessing any okay. applications. Th thank you, because one of the issues with the COVID vaccines, of course, was there was no long-term testing. But what we really need to see here is long-term testing, because I'll give you the example with dengue fever. There's four different strains, and I've spoken to people who've had two different strains of dengue fever. They said the first time they had it, no problems. The second time they got it, they got wiped out because the body had had, had an immune response to the first strain of dengue fever, not the second strain. So my concern is, is, is that you know you have with these single-stranded mRNA viruses because they do mutate and there's various strands. That if we build up a resistance to one strain and then the livestock get you know exposed to an, another strain, that their immune system isn't going to be as strong. So we're going to look at the entire longitudinal impacts of multiple repeated what, shots of what we'll mRNA. What we're looking at is what um, the requirements are versus our statutory criteria. So we have criteria that we need to meet um, under our, um, the AgVet code. We will follow those and ensure that um, we apply the, the rigour that's required to by um, our current legislation. OK, cheers. Thank you. Authorised G. Rennick, LMP Chermside.